How do you do? A man who must fight to survive learns to be strong. But when your strongest opponent is yourself, physical strength isn't enough. The man in our story won his share of boxing matches, but he didn't win the biggest fight until his heart and mind and life were unshackled. <laughs> Johnny, are you okay? Your face! Bobby hit me with a brick. Bobby, why would you do that? He asked for it. You could have killed him. Serves him right. He thinks he's so cool just because he had a few boxing lessons. It don't matter how many lessons he takes. I can still take him. Look at his face. He was always ugly. It's an improvement if you ask me. <laughs> I'll kill you for this. This is Unshackled, dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Homeless people find it hard to trust anyone. So when they come to Pacific Garden Mission, they're already on the defensive. They'll eat the free hot meals offered and spend the night on the fresh clean bed the mission provides. But they still have trouble trusting people when so many have let them down. Mission counselors understand and that's why they speak to each guest individually and introduce them to the one they can trust, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,548 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The young man in our story had nothing on his side to save him from his brother's abuse. All he had was anger, and that anger grew inside until it controlled his life. This is the story of how love overcame that anger and taught him how to fight his real opponent. This is the classic true story of Johnny Garcia, right now on Unshackled. When Bobby threw that brick at my face, I thought the blow would kill me. My entire face swelled up and I couldn't even recognize myself. This wasn't the first time my brother abused me. He flew into these violent rages all the time, especially after getting drunk. My parents couldn't stop him. They seemed just as scared of him as I was. And they were such kind, loving people. I never understood where Bobby's violence and anger came from. Then, one day I learned the truth. Johnny, can you come here for a minute? Your dad and I want to talk to you. Uh-oh. No, it's okay. You're not in trouble, mijo. We just... Well... We thought it was time to tell you that... We'd rather you hear these from us than someone else. You and your brother were already born when I met your mother. I love you as my own sons, but... What? What are you talking about? My ex and your birth father was a terrible man. He used to beat me and you kids when he was drunk. I never thought I'd get away from him. When I met your dad, Ed, I thought he was too good to be true. He was so kind... I thought he was trying to get something out of me, but all he wanted was my love. Does Bobby know? Yes. He's a few years older than you, so he remembers your birth father. But I look just like you, our curly hair. I know. <laughs> Maybe that's a sign that we're meant to be a family. I can't believe it. I thought you were my dad. I am your dad, mijo. I couldn't love you any more than I do now. <laughs> What's your problem? Dad isn't our real father. Why didn't you tell me? Because you're a wimp. I know you couldn't take it like a man. Do you remember our real dad? Yeah. He could punch like me. Oh! <laughs> Stop it, Bobby! <laughs> Grow up crying over something like that? Be a man. Oh, ah, cut it out, Bobby! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> My parents were nice people, but they had their secrets just like everyone else. While snooping around their room one day, I found a porno magazine. It was just the thing I needed to escape from my brother's abuse. Seeing those images gave me a rush and made me feel like a man. This was the beginning of one addiction. Then, I found another. This beer really hits the spot. Here, Mio, 
Want to see? Ed, he's too young for that. Oh, that didn't stop Bobby. If my kids are going to drink, I'd rather they drink with me than sneak around. That's a good point, Dad. He's a kind man, mijo. When I first met him, uh, I, huh. I thought he was a phony. Too good to be true. Uh -huh. Really? Yes. On our first date, he knew I had two little boys at home, so he brought me two bags of groceries. Huh? As he dropped them off, he saw me washing dirty diapers in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, I was so embarrassed. It's true. <laughs> so after our second date, he bought me a washer and dryer so I wouldn't have to wash diapers by hand anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what he wanted, but he's just a nice man. <laughs> well, I'm no angel. <laughs> I used to be violent, just like your birth father. Yes. But as I got older, I learned to control my temper. There's nothing more important than God and family. If you love God and love your wife, you will be in good shape. At age 13, I decided it was time to grow up and get a job. I started working part-time as a stock boy in a liquor store. Temptation overwhelmed me. I stole their porno magazines and some bottles. Meanwhile, my brother continued to abuse me. Since we shared a room, I couldn't avoid him. As Bobby got bigger and stronger, I started to fear for my life. Can you set the table, Johnny? Mom, you gotta do something about Bobby. Ay, what is it this time? Last night, he tied me down and tried to suffocate me with a pillow. He just laughed the whole time. He, he's psychotic. Oh, dear. Ed! Oh. Don't. Don't tell Bobby I told you. He said he'd kill me if I told anybody. And after last night, I think he will. What's going on? Bobby was rough with Johnny again. He's getting dangerous. It scares me how much he is like his father. He belongs in a mental hospital. What can we do, Ed? Johnny, you know I love you. But I love Bobby, too. And I don't want to lose him. So just try to avoid him, okay? If he tries to push your buttons, ignore him. I needed an outlet from the violence I suffered at home. I started picking fights in school. I would punch guys just for looking at me funny. I took up boxing to defend myself against Bobby, but then I developed a real love for the sport. Mom, guess what? I'm going to fight in the Golden Gloves boxing tournament. I am proud of you, son. I know you'll go far. Maybe I'll be a pro someday and get rich. If you want to be a professional athlete, you need to take better care of your health. There's nothing wrong with my health. I notice you've been drinking. Not as much as your brother, I but... I don't drink. Don't lie to your mother, mijo. Okay. Maybe a beer here and there. But everybody drinks. Well, just be careful. Truthfully, I did a lot more than just drink. I smoked pot and used cocaine. And my pornography addiction remained as strong as ever. Finally, the situation with my brother escalated. After a heavy drinking binge, we broke out into a vicious fight right in the yard. Bobby grabbed a brick from a planter and... Oh! oh what in the world? Johnny, are you okay? Your face! Bobby hit me with a brick. Bobby, why would you do that? He asked for it. You could have killed him! Serves him right. He thinks he's so cool just because he had a few boxing lessons? It don't matter how many lessons he takes, I can still take him. After those boxing lessons, I still couldn't defend myself against my brother. Ignoring him wasn't enough. I had to physically remove myself from his violent presence. I dropped out of school and traveled to New Mexico for six months. When I came home again, I craved an even bigger adventure. Johnny, are you going back to school in the fall? No. Come on, mijo. You need an education. I'll get plenty of education. I'm joining the Navy. What? Oh. You're too young to join the Navy. You'll get killed. No, I'll get killed if I stay here with Bobby. If you won't send him away, then I have to go. You are breaking my heart, John. We had such big hopes for you. I'll be back on weekends, and I can finish my education in the service. I can even keep boxing. You're wasting your life, Johnny. Just wasting it. I did well in the Navy. They sent me to San Diego, close enough to home that I could visit my friends and family on weekends. They took pride in my success, but 
Shortly after I joined, an unlikely event changed everything. Johnny, did you hear about Bobby? No. What happened? You didn't hear about it yet? I'm not speaking to him, Mom. You know that. That doesn't matter anymore, Johnny. You need to know about this. He was working on the forklift and... What happened, Mom? You won't believe it. He'll never be the same. We'll hear what happened to Johnny's brother Bobby in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. Since 1877, Pacific Garden Mission has invited men, women, and children from Chicago's streets into a caring refuge where they can feed their hunger and share in fellowship with people who understand what they're going through. In more recent years, the mission recognized the special needs of those struggling with addictions. Over 120 guests take advantage of life-changing programs that help them break free of destructive patterns while learning the skills needed to build productive lives outside of the mission. All of the programs and services offered at Pacific Garden Mission are available free of charge thanks to generous donations from listeners like you. Visit our website at www.pgm.org and click the Donate Now button and share your gift. You can also write to us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Come on, Mom. Tell me what happened to Bobby on the forklift. Well, you know that guy Brian at Bobby's work? He's always been after your brother. Oh, that guy who had those Bible studies at lunch? Right. He always asked Bobby to join him. But you know how your brother is. Do I ever. So, what happened? Did they get in a fight? No. This one day, Brian and his group were praying for Bobby. And your brother got off his forklift and dropped to his knees in prayer. He's saved. What do you mean he's saved? Well, he asked for forgiveness for the way he treated you and everything else he did wrong in his life. He gave his heart to Jesus Christ. And I can hardly recognize him. He looks like a different man, so kind and peaceful. Kind and peaceful. <laughs> oh, I believe that when I see it. It's probably a big joke. You'll see it. You're coming home this weekend, aren't you? Hey, man. You won't believe what happened to me. I, uh... You got saved. Yeah. How did you Mom know? told me about your conversion. This guy at work wouldn't shut up about Jesus. He kept saying I was lost. And first he got on my nerves. Then I started thinking about it and he was right. Johnny, you're lost too. I know you're still doing drugs and hooked on porn and you got to get right with God. I go to church every week. That's just your routine. It's not the same thing as having a personal relationship with God. You need to feel His presence in your heart. I can't describe it, but something changed in me when I stepped off the forklift. I just dropped to my knees and I cried like a baby. You? <laughs> I would have given anything to see that. I saw what a terrible person I was. How I treated you. I won't argue with that. I'm, uh, I'm really sorry for hurting you, Johnny. Will you forgive me? Well, uh, okay, Bobby. I asked Jesus Christ to forgive me, and I know he did. I felt such a weight lift from me. I feel so light and clean. When you ask Jesus to save you, you will feel it too. I couldn't deny the change in my brother. He mailed me a Bible and wrote me letters about his faith in Christ, but I didn't understand it. My passion for boxing took a backseat to my new career in aviation. On paper, I seemed to be excelling at my job, but my old habits continued. You got any more blow, Garcia? No, we use it all on a plane. Oh, was that wild or what? Not as wild as that little Alaskan girl I brought home. You got yourself in trouble, bud. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do about that chick you knocked up? Does your fiancé know about that? I'm not worried about it. She, she says she got an abortion. <laughs> Way to go, lover boy. Way to go? That's awful. Hey, I can't help it if women fall in love with me. You're a jerk, man. You don't joke about stuff like that. What did you say? I'm just saying it's not cool, Garcia. It's garbage behavior. 
You saying I'm garbage? Oh, 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 oh. Our fight was intense. I hurt that man worse than he'd been hurt in Vietnam. He had permanent damage to his face and threatened to kill me. Hey man, check out this note I found under the door. I'm watching you, Garcia. I know when you sleep, I know when you shower, I'm gonna get you. Hmm. You sound serious. Yeah, he's that guy I beat up the other night. He wants to kill me. You better do something about this, Johnny. I'm asking for a transfer. I went to work on the aircraft carrier Enterprise, and once again my rebellious attitude led me down the wrong path. I couldn't stand being on that ship, so I went home for 30 days of unauthorized leave. My pastor convinced me to go back and face the consequences, so I did. I caught the ship which was headed for the Philippines, and I approached the captain. He sentenced me to 30 days of hard labor at a place called Treasure Island Reform. Oh, oh. Garcia, is that the best you can do? Huh? Put some muscle into your work. I want this deck sparkling clean. I've been at this all day. It's not getting any cleaner. Because you're not trying. You scrub like my grandmother. What's the matter, afraid of breaking a nail? <laughs> and if you talk back one more time, I'll see you get another 30 days. Now scrub! At least I got some fresh air swabbing the deck. At night, we had to sit in our cells doing nothing. We weren't allowed to talk to each other. The only thing we were allowed to do was read the Bible. As soon as we were free, we went straight to a bar in the Philippines to get drunk. <laughs> How about that rehab, huh? It really whipped us into shape, huh? I'm never going to take that abuse again. What are you doing after this? I'm going to try and get a girl for the night. Or two. Oh, so you're not going to sit in a room and read your Bible? The Bible's all right. My family believes in that stuff, but me, eh? Mm. How about swapping the deck? Oh, don't remind me. I hated that guard barking orders at me. If I see him off base, I'm going to kill him. Well, now's your chance. Here he is. You're kidding. Hey, you're right. It's really him. Hey, 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 you better not, guys, see ya. Uh -huh. Hey, you're gonna get in big trouble, man! I don't care! I punched that guard right through a wall. When I returned to the ship the next day, I saw wanted posters hanging everywhere. My face was on them, and I faced criminal charges for assaulting an officer. Uh, Mr. Garcia... Hitting a supervisor is a very serious offense. We've tried to accommodate you. We've tried to rehabilitate you. But this court cannot tolerate such behavior. Now, do you have anything to say in your defense before sentencing? Captain, I'm sorry. I have been drinking. I, I don't remember what happened that night. No, no, witnesses back up your statements. But that's no excuse for striking an officer. I'm sorry. Please don't send me to jail. Please, I can't go back to that brig again, sir. Well, the court has every reason to sentence you to prison time for your egregious behavior, but in consideration of your service record up to this time, the court will instead give you a general discharge. Uh, you will wait for your flight back to the U.S. mainland in a brig on shore, Mr. Garcia. I shared that brig with about 50 hardened criminals rapists and murderers on their way to Leffenworth. I knew I was headed in a different direction, but I felt scared nonetheless. So one night when the guard announced a Bible study and asked for volunteers, I was the only one in the crowd to raise my hand. Johnny, God called me to share his message with servicemen and prisoners. I'm both. Well, I was both. I've just been discharged from the service, so now I'm just a prisoner. In a way, everyone is a prisoner. And they'll stay that way until Jesus sets them free. What do you mean? Jesus said, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. That means we all do bad things that separate us from God. It's in our nature. We know these things hurt us, but they're also addictive. Yes, I can't help myself. No matter how hard I try, I can't break free from my addictions. Drinking, drugs, girls. I've heard that you have a lot of anger, too. 
Is that what led you to hit that officer? Yes. I, I'm, I'm completely out of control. I'm like a slave to my anger. I keep trying to clean up my act, but I can't. You're not alone. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 10, there is none righteous. No, not one. But my sins are so much worse than others. No one gets into trouble like I do. We often feel that way. But all sins are the same, in a way. How so? Each one separates us from a perfect God. The Bible says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. If God demands perfection, he'd never accept me. I, I try going to church, but I'll never be good enough. God understands that, Johnny. That's why he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to live as a man on earth and die on the cross to pay the price for your sins. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus took all your sins to the cross with him. Do you understand? When you receive Christ, all your sins are washed away. But I believe in God. Why do I keep getting in trouble? Have you received Christ as your Savior? I think so. I went to church all my life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That sounds like what happened to my brother Bobby. He became a new man since he received Christ. Going to church alone cannot give you a new life in Christ. You need to make a conscious decision to admit you are a sinner and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and give you eternal life. Then you become a new man. Would you like to do that? My new friend led me in prayer, planting a seed in my heart that would later produce the fruit of salvation. But as soon as I got off the brig, I headed to a bar before getting on the airplane to fly home. I went with another sailor who had been discharged. Together, we learned about a problem with our flight. You hear that? We're being rerouted to some little island? Yeah, he said something about nuclear testing. We'll never get home at this rate. I'm homesick too. But I don't want to face my parents. Yeah, and how about all those girls who think you're going to marry them? Yeah. Do you think we're in trouble? Man, we're always in trouble. My whole life seemed to be falling apart. I feared what was waiting for me at home and what my future would hold. I reached under my seat and grabbed the Bible that Bobby had sent me. When I opened it, a letter from him fell out. Brother, if you ever get to a place where you don't believe in God, try him. Then you'll see he's real. Lord, if you're real, please come into my life. I'm tired of messing up time and time again. I'm tired of the guilt and the shame. I'm sorry for the way I've lived. Please change me. For the first time, I understood how my brother had changed so dramatically. Tears poured from my eyes as I felt God's wonderful peace and forgiveness wash over me. My sailor friend must have wondered why I was crying because once we landed on that island, he asked, You okay, Garcia? What happened to you up there? I asked Jesus to come into my heart and change me, and he did. <laughs> I know he did because I feel completely different. So why were you crying? Because it felt so good, like I was... Free. You need to get some sleep. I think all this traveling's getting to you. Two weeks after we landed in California, I jumped in my car and drove all the way home. It took six straight hours. When I got there, I saw my brother lifting weights in the backyard. Hey, Johnny! What brings you home? I just got out of the Navy, but I have bigger news. I read your letter on the airplane and did what you said. I asked God to come into my heart and change me. That's great. Bobby, I felt something change inside of me and I started crying like a baby. <laughs> the same thing happened to me. <laughs> You're born again. It feels awesome. I can see the difference already. I'm so glad you realized what I did. That Jesus is real. That was 1986. With God on my side. I finally broke free and became a new creature in Christ. He delivered me from pornography, alcohol, and violence. My mom and my stepdad came to the Lord, then my younger brother and sister, as well as cousins, aunts, and uncles. 
The Lord led me to a Bible teaching church where I trained for the ministry. And when I came home after my time in the service, I met an old friend who would change my life forever. Johnny, is that you? Hi, Diana. It's great to see you after all that time in the Navy. You too. I can hardly recognize you. Everyone's saying I look like a new man, and I am. I'm saved. You've always looked good to me, but I was afraid to get to know you better. You were so violent in high school, always fighting. God took that anger away. I've been praying that he would. So, what's that you said about getting to know each other better? I met that girl when I was just a teenager, and I always thought of her since then. With my new faith in Christ, I could finally give her the love and kindness she deserved. We got married, and the Lord blessed us with two children. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Listening friend, if you're afraid of what the future brings, why not pray with us now and ensure a life of purpose and an eternity with God in heaven? Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I believe Jesus Christ's death on the cross paid the penalty for my sins and that his sacrifice will give me new life in him. Please come into my heart and guide me to be more like Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. If you'd like to learn more of what it means to have a life with Christ, we'd like to send you some literature to help you learn more about Jesus Christ and his love. Get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. If these true stories are inspiring to you, call your radio station manager and say, Thank you for playing Unshackled. This is program number 3548. Heard in the classic true story of Johnny Garcia were Kurt Nabig, Anna Maria Alvarez, Tom Geich, Demetrius Troy, and Chris Basham. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound, Nadine Aloysio Sorensen. Sound engineer, Kim Rasmussen. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kenitha Gabler and Chrissy Spallone. And I'm Timothy Gregory. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address? Pacific Garden Mission. 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410. Someone is waiting for your call. 312-492-9410. Thanks for listening, and God bless.